To get the most out of this video, you should have an interest in backing up your on-premises data to the AWS cloud. You should already have an AWS account and know how to sign up for AWS services. So just what is AWS Storage Gateway? The AWS Storage Gateway is a service connecting an on-premises software appliance with cloud-based storage to provide seamless and secure integration between an organization's on-premises IT environment and AWS's storage infrastructure. You can back up snapshots of your on-premises application data to Amazon S3. You can also easily mirror data from your on-premises locations to your applications running on Amazon EC2. For this exercise, we will walk through a simple example to back up data to Amazon S3. We will start by setting up and activating a gateway. We'll then create an on-premises gateway storage volume and mount this volume as an iSCSI device from a client running in your data center. Finally, we'll test our setup by saving sample data to this volume and storing a snapshot of this data in Amazon S3. This exercise assumes that you've already provisioned a host in your data center running VMware ESXi hypervisor. Please consult our technical documentation for detailed host requirements. We will be using a Windows client to mount our gateway storage volume. We will also be using VMware's vSphere client to configure our storage gateway VM. So how does the AWS Storage Gateway work? The AWS Storage Gateway is developed as a virtual machine that you install on a host in your data center. You can create storage volumes on your gateway, which you mount to your on-premises application servers as iSCSI devices. As your applications write data to a gateway storage volume over iSCSI, this data is stored on an on-premises disk that you assign to your volume. You can use either new disks or disks already holding data. Your gateway also stores incoming writes in a staging area, referred to as working storage. This working storage space is used by your gateway to prepare and buffer data for upload to AWS. Your gateway then uploads this data over an encrypted SSL connection to the AWS Storage Gateway service running in the AWS cloud. The service then stores the data encrypted in Amazon S3. This data is stored in the form of Amazon EBS snapshots. You can restore these snapshots locally or use them as a starting point for new Amazon EBS volumes enabling access from your Amazon EC2-based applications. Setting up and activating a gateway. You will need to download the gateway virtual machine by navigating to the AWS Storage Gateway console. This VM comes in the form of an .ova file. You'll now deploy the .ova file to your on-premises host running the VMware ESXi hypervisor using your VMware vSphere client, connect to this host. From the File menu, click Deploy OVF Template. Provide the path to your downloaded AWS Storage Gateway OVA package and click Next. Click Next again. The name shown appears in your vSphere client, but is not used anywhere by the AWS Storage Gateway. You can click Next again. Select Thick Provisioned Format and click Next. Thick Provisioning provides your gateway with better performance. Now you can click Finish. It may take a few minutes for the deployment to complete. Synchronize the time on the Storage Gateway VM with the time on the host you've provisioned. In the vSphere client, right-click the name of your Gateway VM and select Edit Settings. In the Options tab of the Virtual Machine Properties dialog box, select VMware Tools from the Options list. Check the Synchronize Guest Time with Host option and click OK. You'll now need to allocate local disks to your deployed Gateway VM to store your application data. Each disk that you allocate to your VM will be used by one of your Gateway iSCSI storage volumes. These disks can be allocated as virtual disks from either SAN or direct attached disks. We will allocate a 1 gigabyte virtual disk to the VM for storing application data from a direct attached disk. Using the vSphere client, right-click the name of your Gateway VM and click Edit Settings. Click Add to add a device. Click Hard Disk to add a disk and click Next. Select Create a new virtual disk and click Next. Specify the size of the disk as 1 GB and click Next. Click Next again. Now you can click Finish. For your gateway to function properly, you must configure your VM to use para-virtualized controllers. This is a very important step. Within the Edit Settings screen of your vSphere console, select SCSI Controller 0 and click Change Type. Select the VMware para-virtual SCSI controller type and click OK. Click OK again. 
At this point, we'll want to allocate disks to our VM for our gateway to use as working storage. Working storage is used to temporarily buffer your writes prior to uploading your data to AWS. For our exercise, we will allocate a 1 gigabyte virtual disk to the VM for working storage, following the same steps we took to allocate a disk for storing our application data. You are now ready to activate your gateway. The activation process associates your gateway with your AWS account. First, we will power on the Gateway VM using the vSphere console. Within the Summary tab of the VM, we will see the IP address of our VM. Note that after powering on the VM, it might take a few minutes for the IP address to appear. In the AWS Storage Gateway console, in the Setup and Activate Gateway wizard, navigate to the Activate Gateway step. Enter the IP address of your gateway and click Proceed to Activation page. In order to proceed to the activation page successfully, your browser must be running on a machine with network connectivity to your local gateway host. On the activation page, provide the AWS region where you want your snapshots stored. It is advisable to select the region closest to your gateway host. Specify a time zone and name for your gateway, and click the Activate button. Congratulations! Your gateway is now activated. Creating and mounting an iSCSI gateway storage volume. Using the AWS Storage Gateway Console, click the Create Volume button. Specify the virtual disk on your VM that you allocated in a previous step to store your application data. Enter an iSCSI target name for your volume. You will later mount this volume from your application server using this target name. Click Create Volume. AWS Storage Gateway will also create a default snapshot schedule for your volume. Your gateway will take daily snapshots of the data written to your volume and store this data in Amazon S3. This schedule is configurable. You will now configure working storage on your gateway, selecting the disk that you allocated to your VM for this purpose in a previous step. Working storage is used to buffer your writes to Amazon S3. You can always add more working storage as you need it. We can now connect to our storage volume using our Windows client. Copy the IP address of your gateway storage volume. Start the iSCSI initiator on your Windows client, click Discover Portal, and paste your volume's IP address. You will see the iSCSI target you created appear. Select this target and click Connect. You can now initialize and format this storage volume for Windows so you can begin writing data to it. In the Start menu, type diskmanagement.msc to open the Disk Management Console. Your storage volume will appear as a mounted disk. Create a simple volume from this disk. You can now access this volume from Windows Explorer. Using our Gateway Let's test our setup by copying a sample file over to our mounted volume. Now let's take a snapshot of this data by going to the Storage Gateway Console and selecting the Create Snapshot button. We can now track and manage this snapshot using the console. We've now successfully connected to our storage volume over iSCSI, written data, and uploaded a backup snapshot of this data to Amazon S3. In the event one of our local disks fails, we can restore this snapshot locally by creating a new storage volume from a new disk and specifying our backup snapshot. We can also create an Amazon EBS volume from this snapshot and access its contents from Amazon EC2. Now that you've seen how to do it, try it yourself by visiting console.aws.amazon.com forward slash storage gateway. To read more about AWS Storage Gateway, visit aws.amazon.com forward slash storage gateway.